Welcome to Labor Lent. I am Sharon Ijasson. Recently, the Nigerian Labor Congress took to the streets of Kaduna State to protest massacre of workers. We will be right back. For three days, organized labor held Kaduna State by its juggler, crippling economic activities. Despite piling pressure, the state government refused to budge as it declared the NLC president wanted for alleged economic sabotage. Both parties refused to shift grounds as businesses and the people suffered. Please sit down, sit down. The federal government, through the Ministry of Labor and Employment, says it is intervening in the interest of a harmonious industrial relation. The minister sets the ball rolling with an opening remark. He says dialogue must take place between the two parties at loggerheads. The Labour Centre said there was no dialogue. They wrote letters that were not answered, not replied to. So we want to agree that we are now replying everything on this thing. The Kaduna State Government speaks about the reasons behind the workers' sack, just as Labour insists the exercise was illegal. In the month of March, three billion six hundred million were expended in the payment of salaries and allowances and pension for staff of the local governments, leaving them, that's the 23 local governments, with a paltry sum of 10.8 million. The cross of the issue is straightforward. Redundancy had been declared, and there are clear provisions on how to address the issue of redundancy in our laws. In fact, even the payment, Section C said, employers shall use his best endeavors to negotiate redundancy payment. The meeting then went into closed doors. The conciliation meeting will last one week, within which both parties are expected to reach an amicable settlement. The minister promises to invoke provisions of the Trade Union Act and drag both parties to the Industrial Arbitration Panel of the National Industrial Court, should still made, persists. The federal government recently approved adjustments in pensions of retired workers under the pension scheme arising from the implementation of the new National Minimum Wage Act 2019. But many states in the country are yet to implement the new minimum wage for pensioners. This development is giving members of the Nigerian Union of Pensioners, NUP, in the Southwest region serious concern. At the union's zonal meeting in Akure, members said the suffering of senior citizens after serving the country is becoming unbearable. Increment in pension since 2000 and, uh, 2002. The Southwest chairman of the uh, union, yes. Ayoy Kumakmai, urged governors in the zone to rescue pensioners from a timely debt by implementing the pension increment as approved under the new national minimum wage. The new thing boils down to the attitude of our governors in the states in their failure to implement the stipulations of a Nigerian constitution as regarding the EU's of a review of pensions as I'm going to do, has become a great problem. Uh, it's not a privilege, it's a, it's a constitutional right. The spokesman of the union blamed the economic woes facing the country on lack of creativity and the management of the economy and governance by most government appointees and state governors. Nigerian governors are very, very lazy. They don't, except few of them, Many of them will have resources at the, at the backyard of their, their states and will not tap them. The problem they have, why I said they are lazy, is that these pitans, they take every month from Abuja, has indulged most of them and they are not looking inwards. The retired workers also express displeasure of a high rate of insecurity in all parts of the country. Failing the banditry fueling insecurity is non-distribution of opportunities to Nigerians. Oh, if you are from this place, even if you 
even if you didn't go to school, you are given opportunities. While those that went to school are not given, they are not even given a wink by authorities. A mass rally and strike was held in Kaduna State following mass sack, demotion and casualization of workers in the state. The president of the Nigerian Liberal Congress, NLC Ayuba Waba, had at different fora called on the state government to reverse the mass sack of the workers in the state, describing it as arbitrary and cruel decision. There is no retreat and there is no surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Railway from here to Kaduna has been stopped. Yeah. Yet. The airport. the airport has been closed, yes. yet we have somebody that, that will say that he's fighting. Well, it's to tell all of us that the situation in Nigeria cannot change, the situation in Kaduna cannot change, except we are able to take our destinies in our own hands. And that is why we are here. Comrade, is it not even laughable? Hello? Is it not laughable? Because he realized our courts were actually shut down because of their action and inaction. And he went back and just false information to say that he acquired an order for six years ago to try to arrest us. From the NLC Secretariat, workers walk to the Secretariat to express their displeasure. But the government has a different view on the development. We have issued a circular directing all MDAs to open um, registers, attendance registers so that we take attendance of those on level 14 and above that may refuse to come to work. Those below level 14 should continue to stay at home until we issue a circular to recall them. This government has demonstrated in action its commitment to the welfare of its workers, but it insists that this is sustainable only in the context of the general welfare of residents of the state that the government itself is mandated to serve. Thus, it is not sustainable to persist in spending 84% to 96% of its FAC receipts on salaries and personal costs, as has been the experience of the state since October 2020. Finders reveals that officers in grade levels 01 to 06 have been converted to casual workers and a circular has been sent directing that no local government in Kaduna State shall have more than 50 staff in its employ. The state government also effected the compulsory retirement of officers that are 50 years old and above and the compulsory retirement of officers on grade level 14. According to Section 20, Subsection 1, 2, and 3 of Nigeria's Labor Act, the employer shall inform the trade union or workers' representatives concerned of the reasons for and the extent of the anticipated redundancy. For days, residents of Cardinal State experienced total blackout. They did not have access to petroleum products and more. It will be recalled that Kaduna State Governor sacked teachers over two years ago and is yet to pay the sacked workers their retirement benefits. At the local government level, over 7,700 workers are already disengaged. So look at the number and the multiple, uh, multiplying effects and the relationship they have with their, 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 their families. People are already crying. And I, I think I, I mentioned that some have already gotten uh, health uh, challenges of hypertension. And equally, someone as I'm talking to you, you can send somebody to go and confirm that. So the situation is very pathetic, it's disturbing. And the worst part of it, they don't have confidence that the government is really looking into this issue with human face. I'm here to also address our readiness concerning the tuition fee increment in the entire Kaduna State institutions. 500% increment. This is an exploitation in shame. which we are not going to accept it. The honor says before you disengage the worker, there's what we call redundancy law. You, you shall engage the labor union representing that worker. Erufai 
acted in breach of this ILO convention, in breach of Trade Union Amendment Act of Nigeria 206. He has acted against fundamental human rights, which is the charter under ILO and United Nations. Economically, the situation has improved because I know how much I suffered, especially to get water, to get power, I mean energy in my house. It's not easy. But now that activities have resumed, I'm happy. So dialogue should not be seen as uh, an instrument of, you know, which hunting anybody. No. Neither the government should think that labor is there to sabotage its effort. No. Well, I'm very happy that the strike has been suspended because now the students can go back to school. I even came to filling station to buy fuel because my car, there was no fuel in the car. So I'm happy now everything is moving smooth now and I pray it will keep moving smooth. have you on the program, sir. Thank you. A lot has been happening in the labor sector, um, especially with the mass rally that was held in Katuna State, which has brought a um, diverse reaction. Um, can you bring us up to speed once again why it's expedient for the Nigerian Labor Congress to come out um, in large numbers to um, protest against the mass sack um, that um, workers in Katina are experiencing at the moment? Well, you know, in the, in the first instance, the, the primary uh, responsibility of the Indian Trade Union is to protect, implement, and uh, jobs of its members and the rights of its members. And when that was violated, uh, it's incumbent on them to protest or take measures to ensure that you know, it, 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 it doesn't become a, a habit. In 2017, almost 20,000 workers, teachers were sacked on a presumed competency test. And thereafter, they said they were asking some of them to come back, you know, and then they were engaging them. That cast a, a kind of a, a doubt on the efficiency of the process. When you sack first, and then you review, instead of setting up a criteria, you know, instead of asking people if you are in doubt uh, on the kind of certificate they have, you ask people to submit their certificates and you go through the process. You know, and then by the time you sack people, you now ask them to bring their certificates for you now to verify, to see the number you, you take back. That was a wrong measure. And then you set a, a, a competency test, so-called competency test, where you briefed consultants. The validity of such competency tests, you know, is in doubt, you know, because uh, by every measure. And that happened between that time and now, so most of those workers have not been paid their entitlement. <clears throat> and the law on redundancy is clear, you know, before you anticipate such a process, before you practice it, you have to invite Section 20 of the Trade Union Act. You have to invite the union concern. You try the, the extent of uh, the exercise, why you want to take part in the exercise, and you discuss even what should be paid to the worker. And the law is equally clear about this, that the letter must go along with the check or the payment you know, to the worker. And then you have to only determine, you know, the process to be used. Is it a last in, first out? Because the law stipulates all this that must be used. And none of this was followed. And here now, this year again, under the presumed process of reform in Kaduna, you now started sacking a lot, almost 5,000. And you have listed about 11,000 or more for sack because that 11,000 did not even get their salaries for April, because in anticipation of releasing their sack letter. Now, if you look at this, somebody, some governors who ruled that state in the past employed these people. And suddenly your job is to destroy what others have created. No trade union organization will accept that. And all correspondences addressed to you, we are not acknowledged. We didn't have any other option than to do During the protest, there was an attack um, on workers 
how would you react to this um, attack uh, on workers vis-a-vis um, -vis, um, the right of workers to protest? The attack on workers, you know, was real. We, that was the second day of our protest, and we moved normally. So uh, there's a roundabout that connects Lepa Junction, one foot that tailored into 44. We are that roundabout protesting. When the governor and his entourage moved into Lepa office, after some minutes, we saw the uh, talks advancing. And before we knew it, they barged into us with sticks and dangerous weapons. It, didn't even... it was then that the, the everybody was taken aback on what was happening. So suddenly, the workers gained momentum and started pushing them. When the workers were pushing them, the policemen started firing their guns in our midst. Up to now, I don't think I've recovered my eyes. Up to now, I'm talking to the level of, you know, tear gas that was released on us. A lot like wounded. Some of them are in the hospital, some of the people that were wounded. I'm done for the job, you know, because earlier the man had declared us wanted. The man had taken the position of a judge, announcing uh, charges against us. Is everywhere. This picture is everywhere, announcing the charges that we are going to face. In the separation of power between the judiciary, the legislative, and the executive, is the person doing all this. In a sense, society where it came out to declare us wanted, doing the job of a court, competent court. By now, you know, it should have been queried on this. It should have been questioned by it. There's a problem for us if every elected officer does not know the limit of his powers. And as a citizen, for anybody to declare you wanted, who is not the appropriate authority recognized by the, by, by the, the Constitution, it makes a mess of the whole process. So that was what happened. But the following morning, we thought it was over. Before we could get to NLC sectarians, only God knows what happened. 500 talks were already occupying them. I think the police acted promptly, and over 40 were arrested with various dangerous weapons. But my own argument is that the police should not stop there, they should prosecute this weapon. And at various junctions, the police, the, sorry, the talks were there, fully armed, waiting for us to do men. The police in Kaduna tried their best. Very quickly, I would like to ask you, um, according to the Nigerian labor law or international labor law, which Nigeria is um, a part of, um, what would be your take on the fact that um, workers have the right to protest and that um, was not really allowed um, during the protest in Kaduna? What happened in Kaduna by the government was a premeditated action, you know, even before our arrival or even by refusing to even acknowledge letters to write, you know, for a meeting, even with the Kaduna workers. And then by the time we even got there, because we have been to other states, you know, we were in a river state, that same evening that we arrived, the governor called for a meeting. And the following morning, you know, there was no problem. It was resolved before morning. In Imo state, you know, we arrived that afternoon. You know, the governor called for a meeting. That was during the time of Rochas. You know, it was resolved. There, there were instances, you know, that uh, the governors who would prefer dialogue who want to talk even last minute. But this one, nobody acknowledged the letters we wrote. Even when we arrived, we were declared wanted, you know, by the authorities. And uh, we are giving charges by the governor himself. You can see him in all social media talking, telling you about Marcelino's offenses, create, you know, sentencing us, you know, those, and then, or assuming the position of a judge. 
Now, the law is clear about uh, peaceful protest, right for peace to peaceful assembly, as enshrined in the Nigerian Constitution, Section 40. You know, and the Constitution is even uh, has exclusive uh, clauses that where any law is a contravention, you know, to the the Constitution, that law should be to the extent of being a, a consistent non and voice, you know. So you can't have a Kaduna state law or any Masilinos law or whatever that supersedes, you know, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We exercise our rights and there are various citations, you know, case laws, you know, uh, precedents in the constitution and in the courts where the right of the people to assemble freely, to protest, to picket is equally reinforced. So we have all the rights as provided by the law, and even all the international conventions, ILO, UN, resolutions on freedom of association and movement without hindrance. From the documents that we received, level one officers to level one, some were declared uh, to be converted to casual workers. How would you react to this? Well, th that has to do with, you know, I wouldn't know the mantra that we have with the Kaduna State people. The reintroduction would not do any good, but if you're elected, the essence of being elected is to do better than those before you. If you are now taking people back to where they have passed before, that shows you the mindset, that shows you the policy directive of such executive who is embarking on this. Now, the one hallmark, one thing that is significant about public service job is the, that it enjoys statutory flavor. Unlike private jobs, if you are employed in civil service or public service, you are supposed to work till you are retired. You enjoy job security. Now that somebody will just take you out of job, now I call you as a casual, it then means he can sack you tomorrow, he can wake up tomorrow to sack you without all the benefits, you know, a pension, a health, you know, and many others. So that's the danger of, you know, uh, casualizing every worker or workers from that level down there. And I wouldn't know whether the problem is lack of HR experts in the various ministries in this executive who can take care of all this. And in most instances, you see them, they outsource them and see pay the outsource uh, companies high, who now pay the other people is cheaper. So that is inflicting more injury to the citizens of Kaduna State. Is there any hope for these workers that might have lost their jobs? Well, the meeting actually held yesterday, if, despite uh, the threat by the Kaduna State government that they will not attend the meeting. The minister, minister of Labor reported that the governor got a call to him and they told him the some other national assignments he was giving and said he's giving full mandate to his head of service, commissioners and others that attended the meeting. And the meeting held, contrary to the position of uh, uh, that they will not attend. And they tell man committee was set up between labor and uh, government. The Kaduna State workers were there, and one of the deputy presidents of the NLC was to be part of, or is to be part of the, the meeting. And then uh, the head of service, you know, and others from Kaduna State, you know, were to meet. They are supposed to report back to us by Tuesday on the modality they are supposed to take and whether the committee will be a standing committee, you know, in interfacing, because you have to consult the workers, even when you are doing reforms, you have to be part of the committees. So they were given a clear mandate to go and comply with the redundancy policy, you know, and then, and report back, this job will be completed within one week. That was it terms of reference they were given. So it was taken back to them because if you impose these decisions on them and they have to live together in Kaduna, you know, the peace may not be there. Let them go and dialogue again, you know, and come back with a position.
so that we look at it, you know, afresh, moving forward. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching.